What's going on, everybody? You're tuned in to another episode of the Music Mastery Podcast with your host, Lizzy the Gifted. And on this podcast, what we do is we do a brand new audio episode every single day, documenting my journey as an independent musician. You can click below in the description. If you're watching this on YouTube, click below, subscribe to the podcast, share it with a friend, and uh, we can spread this movement together and we can try to help each other get through this crazy music game. So today what I'm going to talk about is I'm going to talk about responsibility of leadership, the burden of leadership. Here's the deal, man. You need to set your goals right from the get go of when you start your career of what you want to be. If you even want to be a leader, because not everybody who does music wants to be a leader. Some people do music and they're like, yeah, I just want to do my music. I'm just trying to put out my music. That's it. Here's the deal though. I'm going to be honest with you. If you have that attitude, you've got the wrong attitude. You sh everybody doing music, everybody who's trying to make a music career and a music brand or whatever, we are all trying to be leaders. Why? How? Because our fans want us to lead them. People are silently begging to be led. People want leadership. I want leadership. Even though I'm a leader myself, I want leadership too. I look up to people. I want people that I can look up to and say, hey, I want to be like that person. You know what I mean? You are a leader whether you choose to be or not if you're choosing to do this music thing. If you don't want to do music, I don't even know how you could be watching this if you're not trying to be a musician but or listening to this. But, you know, the point of what I'm saying is like you have to be a leader. So if you don't want to be a leader, you're not going to build a fan base because your fans are going to want somebody who can lead them to the next step in their life. And if you're not ready to take on that responsibility or that's not something that you want, you're in the wrong game. You should go get a job. But let's be realistic with ourselves. If you don't want to get a job, which I don't think you do because you want to be like an entrepreneur, that's great. You should be. You should be trying to be like that. But you got to remember the responsibility is I am leading people. So what does it mean to be a leader? What's the responsibility? Well, here's the deal. Vince Lombard Lombardi said leading by example isn't the best way to lead. It's the only way to lead. What does that even mean? Dude, that basically means that like if you're going to tell somebody to do something, you better be doing it yourself too. And... The best way to lead people is by doing, leading by example, right? Is by not just telling people, hey, this is the thing you should try, but also showing them. That's why my podcast, like sometimes, yes, I have podcasts where I'm teaching stuff and showing you stuff and I'm like, hey, try this, you should try this. But the premise of this entire podcast is just for me to document my journey. That's literally it. So like when it comes to leadership for me, I'm going to be honest with you, when I first like I wasn't always, I'm not even a good leader right now. Like I'm not that good at leadership. I'm working on it. I'm getting better. But I have a long way to go, you know? Um, you know, and what I think it takes to be a good leader is somebody who cares about people and somebody who's empathetic and somebody who's willing to do what it takes to get someone to do something. You're not a good leader just because you're in a leadership position and you freaking yell at people and you're super hard on people and you force people to do something. That's not necessarily being a good leader. Being a good leader is getting people to believe in something. How do you get someone to believe? Think about this. Do you want to listen to somebody who you don't like? Think about that for a sec. Or not even like, forget like, respect. Do you want to listen to somebody that you don't respect? The answer is obviously no. We want to respect the people that lead us, right? So the number one thing to do if you want to be a great leader, you got to get respect from people. If people don't respect you, they're not going to listen to you. Now, they can respect you and not like you and still listen to you. If they respect you and they like you, that's cool. Like, but they don't have to do that. You just need people to respect you, right? Now, as a music artist and you're trying to get fans to love you, of course, you're going to get them to love you. But, but you need them to respect you. Now, how do you get your fans to respect you? Well, you got you to gotta show them that you're really serious about music. You got to show them like, yo, I'm serious about my message. Everybody's message is different. My message is is that we all have something that we want to do with our life, but we got to take ownership to actually do that thing. Does that make sense? That's, that's really my message is that we have to take ownership. And I'm sure my message is going to change and, and all that. But basically, my whole message is like you should believe in yourself because it's actually practical to believe in yourself. It makes sense. You can, whatever dreams you have, they're, they're probably not that crazy. You know what I mean? Like you think your dreams are crazy maybe because people tell you your dreams are crazy. But that doesn't mean they are. That's crazy to them. 
So my whole message is I think we can all believe in ourselves and like we should. And I'm trying to be here to give musicians, entrepreneurial musicians, the resources, the tools, and the knowledge to actually achieve their goals. So that's what I'm try trying to do. But other people are really, really focused on mental health. Other people are focused on um, really, really being creative, like creativity and pushing the creative boundaries. So everybody's got something different that they're trying to do. And <clears throat> people aren't going to respect you if they don't think you're really about it. <clears throat> like there's artists who talk about being gangster and hood and like they're thugs and they're gangbangers, but they're not really. You know, they just kind of use that message, but they're not really about that life. And, and, and what happens? People don't respect them. You've got to be verified with your message. And so if people don't respect you, they're not going to want to listen to you. So that's number one is respect. Number two is you gotta, you got to not only say the right message, but you got to really live that message. You know, I can't be out here telling people, yo, you need to put out content if I don't put out content. And I do. I put out content every day. I do a podcast every day. So I'm in a position to tell people to put out content. But I'm not out here, you know, I don't know. I, 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 don't, I don't know. I'm not out here telling people stuff that I, I don't actually do. You know, I tell people stuff that I have done or that I currently do. So that's another thing is I, sh I, I, I don't tell people to do something until I do it. I don't tell people to do it until I do it. Does that make sense too? That's another way to get people to respect you is you, you do something. Um, you know, and, and, and in terms of leadership, you need to put yourself at a place where you're winning. Now, if you're not winning and you're not getting the wins you want, that doesn't mean you're not winning. That means you feel like you're not winning. Like for me personally, I've really learned that like I feel sometimes like I'm not winning. Like sometimes I feel like I have more to go and like I'm not doing good enough and like I struggle with that. But that doesn't mean I'm not winning. That just means I don't categorize myself as not winning. Other people look at me and go, you're doing a great job. They tell me all the time. I try to ignore it. But people tell me, yo, you're doing a good job. You're killing it. Like you're inspiring me. Keep going. I'm like, all right, then I guess I'm doing something right. But the point is, you you know, you don't want to put yourself on as somebody who doesn't know what they're talking. I mean, you don't want to come off as you're you're a loser. You don't want to come off as you're a loser, or that you're broke, or that you, whatever. Like you want to show that you are something to shoot for. Like we look at leaders as people that we feel like we can be like. I don't want to be like certain people. Like if you're poor or you're broke, I don't want to be like you. So if you say you're broke, I'm not going to listen to you. Or if you act like you're broke. If you're dirty. Like if you're dirty, like I don't like dirty shit. Meaning like if you talk about how much of a mess your room is and, I, and your room is messy or you look terrible. Like if you don't look good. Not if you're ugly or pretty or beautiful. I, no, I'm talking about clean shaven. I'm talking, I'm talking about do you look clean and presentable? Like that's what I'm talking about. That stuff matters. You don't need to wear designer clothes. I'm not wearing designer. This is Tangle Free. I got this sh shirt for free. This was at Costco. It's not about being all designer and chains. And I'm, I'm just talking about being presentable. Putting yourself at a place where people look at you and go, that's something I want to strive to be like. That's somebody I want to be like. That's what it takes. That's how you build influence. That it's respect. It's being about what you say you're about and putting yourself at a higher status. Not saying I'm, that you're better than other people. It's not, no. I'm not better than you. I'm not better than you. I'm not at a higher, I'm just putting myself, I'm holding myself to a high standard and showing you that I hold myself to a high standard. That's it. And I'm exposing fake stuff in the industry and I'm exposing people for their bullshit and I'm exposing people for, you know, stuff that they're doing wrong. But that doesn't mean I'm a better person than you at all. You know what I mean? That just means I'm trying to do this. You know, you can check it out too. That's what it takes. And there's a burden to leadership because it's not just about putting YouTube, like you might be watching me right now and this could be you've just discovered me or this is like your first video that you're ever seeing of me. You don't know about me much yet, but what you should know is that I'm not just here sitting in my garage making videos and recording podcasts. I'm not just in here making beats by myself. I'm not just, you know, doing stuff by myself. You could ask, I'm on the phone all day every, I'm not on the phone all day, but I'm on the phone a lot. I'm talking to people. 
I'm Zoom calling people. I'm having people come through the studio. I'm networking. Why am I talking about that? Because you can't be a leader if you're only by yourself. I'm networking though like crazy. I'm networking like crazy. And I'm talking to people. Yo, what's up? How's things going? I'm making friends on the internet, like actual friends. I got friends I never met in person, but they're my friends because we've talked on the phone, we're both doing music, we're both helping each other. You know what I mean? And I'm not charging them for their time, they're my friends. Even the people who I charge for coaching, that's impact right there. Yes, they are paying me, but I'm making an impact on them that's greater than if they didn't pay me. You know what I mean? That's leadership. And there's a burden, there's a responsibility. You are handling people's emotions. And it's hard, man, I'm not gonna lie to you. It's freaking hard. Because there's people whose emotions I don't wanna handle. There's people who I don't wanna talk to. But if you wanna be a leader and you want, you know, that person looks up to, if that person looks up to you, you gotta handle it. And it's super difficult for me. I mean, it's something I, you know, you can see, I freaking struggle with that a lot because there are people who I'm like, dude, I can't help you anymore. It's just how it goes. And I'm like, I feel guilty because I want to help that person because I'm a leader. But at the same time, you're hurting me by me trying to help you. So I can't keep helping you, you know? Um, ugh. That stresses me out, bro. That literally stresses me out thinking about that. You know what I mean? I hate that. That's the burden of being a leader. If you don't want to be a leader, if you don't feel emotionally that burden of like, oh my God, like I can't let go of helping that person, then you're not a leader. I feel like. Actually, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe some, maybe great leaders know when to let go. I think that's probably true. I think great leaders probably know when to let go. You know, I don't know when to let go. I'm getting better, but you know, I got more work to do. You know what I'm saying? But there's a burden to leadership, but I think it's worth it because people who are leaders, people who influence, people who make a difference in people's lives are the ones who become the most successful. Those are the ones who make the most money. J. Cole, leader. Kendrick, Dr. Dre, Jay-Z, Kanye West. All these people are leaders. Drake, they're leaders, whether they choose it or not. They have a response, and you have a responsibility when you're a leader. You know, the rappers, you look, you look and see. Rappers who, you'll see the difference in success. Like I think a lot of you look at the wrong rappers for success. You look at the dudes who are hot right now. You look at the dudes who are hot right now. That's who you look at. Or a lot of people look at. Don't look at the dudes who are hot right now. Look at the dudes who've had a career for 10 plus years. J. Cole's been around, gosh, I don't know, a really long time. Jay-Z, can you guys believe that Jay-Z is still super relevant? Not any knock to him. It's like he's, what has he gone, 30 years? He started his rap career in his 30s. I think now he's almost 50. He's been gone 20 years. Look at Snoop. Snoop Dogg is relevant. Snoop Dogg has a platform. He's like 60 or like 50 something. He's old. He's been in the game for like 30 years, bro. That, that, Kanye, Drake, Drake. Drake isn't done, he's about to drop another album. Every time, Drake, Drake when, I, when I first heard Drake's song, Best I Ever Had, I was 14, but he was dropping music before that. I'm 27. I was a freaking child when Drake dropped Best I Ever Had. I was a boy, I was 14 years old. Maybe in my head thing, that song, that was 13 years ago. And he still breaks the internet every time he drops a song. That, that. You got a lot of people look at, let's take Migos for example. No shade, Migos is killing it. Like you should be like, that's a great level to be at. But I want you to think about something. You're talking about Migos and you're like, all right, I'm gonna do it how Migos does it. Okay. I, this is what it was. I was talking about, Migos is a great example. I'm gonna tell a story after, but Migos, I'm like, all right, 
You're gonna do stuff. You're gonna do stuff like Migos. Well, guess what? They open for Drake. Like when Drake went on tour, Migos opened. So as big as you think Migos is, there's levels. Because they ain't as big as Drake. Perfect example. My friend Gabe and I went to, went to see uh, a Gabe. We went to see J. Cole a couple years ago, or like a year ago. I don't remember. It was a while ago. We saw J. Cole live at Oracle Arena. Oh, so it was a couple years ago because Oracle doesn't even, yeah. Um, and Young Thug was the one of the openers. Popping. I loved it. Young Thug killed it. And on the way home, I was talking to Gabe. I was like, bro, I feel like I need to put out way more songs. Like, Young Thug puts out so much music and he's so blah, 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 does his thing. And I'm like, bro, I just feel like he's so relevant all the time. I need to put out music like that frequently. You know what he said? He goes, yeah, but he opened for J. Cole. I was like, whoa, you're right. He's like, J. Cole might put out music a lot less frequently and you wish, like I always wish J. Cole was more frequent in the media because I like love him and I hate the fact that he's so spread. Him and Kendrick like don't do social, like they don't interact with fans on the internet, like they don't put out music all the time. That always used to frustrate me until my friend Gabe said that. And he's like, you might say you want to be like Young Thug, but Young Thug opens for J. Cole. And I was like, oh snap. So who's the leader? By the way, I saw Young Thug, this is really no sh I'm not disrespecting Young Thug, I'm stating a fact of my perspective. There was a video a while back and they asked Young Thug, hey, do you feel like rappers have the responsibility to speak out against racial issues? He goes, no, I'm just trying to get my money. I'm just trying to get mine. I'm not talking about that, I'm trying to get my money. I'm trying to get rich. Some people were like, yeah, he doesn't have a responsibility. I'm like, okay, he opens for J. Cole. What does J. Cole speak about? Look at what J. Cole talks about. You ask J. Cole that same question, he's gonna give you a deep answer. And J. Cole talks about deep stuff in his music and out of his music. Look at Kendrick. Kendrick is talking about smart things. Kendrick's a leader. So who are you really trying to be like? You look at dudes who are hot right now, right? Even if they've been popping five, 10 years, you look at the level they're at. Why are you trying to shoot like those dudes? Wouldn't you wanna be like Drake? That level of success? Jay-Z, Kanye, why are you shooting for the mid-tier dude? Why are you shooting for somebody who opens? Like even Russ, for example. Russ does not have openers, and Russ doesn't open for people, and Russ sells out arenas. Why are you not shooting for that level of success? Russ is a leader, by the way. Even Young Thug is a leader, and Migos is a leader. They're leaders in their own right. They are leaders. They've got millions of people watching them. But where do you want to be on the scale? Do you ever want to be at a point where you look up and go, I'm opening for him? I, I eventually want to get to the point where I'm headlining and where I'm like, I don't do openers. I don't open. I'm Lazy the Gifted. I'm not an opener. I am now, but I'm just saying, like, don't you want to get to that point where you're not? Why would you want to be somebody who's the opener? I, I, I can't believe Young Thug did that. They must have got, gave him a big check because I look at that and go, why would I want to be the opener? I'm the headliner. I should do a headline tour. Maybe he can't sell out arenas though. Maybe that's why. I'm not sure, I'm not gonna speak on it. The point is leadership, it's a responsibility and it is a burden that you should be ready to take on. If you're not ready to take on the burden of leadership, get your mind right, all right? Hey, if you got value from the episode, subscribe to the podcast, okay? If you're watching this on YouTube right now, I honestly would rather you click below in the description and subscribe to the podcast. You, so you can subscribe to YouTube also, that'd be cool too, but like, I really want you to go subscribe to the pod because I don't do YouTube videos every day. I do new podcast episodes literally every single day. I don't miss a day. I've gone 223 days in a row. Damn. So subscribe to the podcast, all right? Thank you guys so much for watching, listening, and tuning in to the Music Mastery Podcast, and I will talk to you again tomorrow. Peace.